Hello and welcome to week three of virtual school. I'm your teacher, Mr. Cohn. This week we are back at the middle school as the building has been reopened to staff and teachers. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to take off my coronavirus mask. Whew, getting hot in there. People at Walmart really give me funny looks when I walk in wearing Spider-Man mask. Anyway, as you can see, we are currently on day 20 of the coronavirus lockdown and my beard has grown from patchy to scraggly. This week, our quote comes from Kobe Bryant, who, as you may have heard, was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame last week. Kobe said, everything negative, pressure, or challenges is all an opportunity for us to rise. I think this quote is really important to remember during this crisis, because as we are all faced with a very challenging situation in our lives at the moment. However, this negative challenge can be also seen as a chance for us to show how we can rise to the occasion and do our best. So this week, be responsible. Do all of your work on time. Do it for Kobe. There are still no updates on the 2020 primary election as most of the country is still locked down due to the coronavirus. The state of Wisconsin is scheduled to vote on Tuesday, so I'll have results for you next week. This brings me to our first assignment of the week, current events. You know the drill here with current events. Our favorite TV news anchor, Carl Azus, has been bringing you the news from his house every day. If you've been watching it, that's awesome. If not, you'll need to go on CNN 10, find an episode of the news from the last week, pick a story that interests you, write down the facts, and then write a summary paragraph of that story, just like we've done all year. The assignment can be found on Classroom. It's due by Friday. Ah, what's that? Captain America? Time for the secret compartment? Let's see what's inside of your head today. Ooh, yummy! It's a crepe. Crepes are a French pastry that can either be filled with sweet toppings like fruit and sugar or savory toppings like meat and vegetables. And that brings us to our second assignment for the week. We've been learning about the countries of Europe all unit, and this week you get to taste what it's like to live in one of them. Yes, that's right, you get to eat and make tasty food and get points for it. Don't everybody thank me at once. For the assignment, you'll need to pick a country from a list that I've given you on Classroom. Go on the internet and find a recipe of a popular food from that country. It could be pizza from Italy or crepes from France. You get to do the research and you get to pick it out. Once you've found a recipe, you'll need to cook that at home, and that's right, you have to be the chef here. Don't have your parents or grandparents make it for you, you need to be a part of the cooking. Help your family out here a little bit. Once the, you are done with your dish, you'll take a picture of the finished product and upload it to Classroom along with the recipe that you cooked. This will get your points for the week. Please finish this by Friday. Bon appetit. Your final assignments for the week are similar to last week. You will need to take notes on Southern Europe and Eastern Europe, which are our final two regions of the continent. These notes will come along with instructional videos where I'll walk you through the PowerPoint and give you more information about them. So please look for those to be posted by Wednesday and finish them by the end of the week. Now, on our next segment, which is really complicated stuff, I will explain to you really complicated stuff in a way that's hopefully not too hard to get. Today on Really Complicated Stuff, it's Russia. Ah! Who's that? Ah! It's Putin! Putin's been watching us the whole time. As some of you may know, the president of Russia at the moment is currently Vladimir Putin, and he's kind of a creepy guy if you didn't know. So, who is Putin and why does he look so scary? And why do people in the US kind of think that he's not the best leader in the world? Well, to answer that, we need to go all the way back to 1917. For hundreds of years, Russia was a monarchy. As we learned last week, a monarchy is the government that is ruled by a king or a queen. In February of 1917, the people of Russia revolted against their last king, whose name was Tsar Nicholas II. He looked like this. As you can see, he had an awesome beard and mustache. However, despite his amazing beard, Tsar Nicholas was a terrible king. He was not very great. During World War I, 
he was doing a horrible job as king. The, the army was losing to the Germans and people were starving to death in his country. So the people revolted against Tsar Nicholas and removed him from, from power. By that fall, however, things had not improved very much for the Russian people. Russia was still losing to Germany and people were still hungry. And so things got much more chaotic after Nicholas was gone. Into this power vacuum stepped a man named Vladimir Lenin. Vladimir Lenin was a communist who believed that everyone should share everything. Communists believed that private property should not exist and that the government should control most aspects of people's lives. This may sound terrible to us freedom-loving Americans, but to poor, starving Russians, Lenin's promise of peace, bread, and land seemed pretty good and better than starving to death. He promised to do this by taking away money and land from rich people, selling those things, and using that money to give it to the poor people and promising them food, which sounded to them to be pretty good. Unfortunately, Lenin's revolution was not very peaceful. After killing a bunch of upper-class Russians, including Tsar Nicholas, Lenin took power. However, he had to fight a civil war against Russia's upper class still, and finally in 1921, after a lot more death and destruction, Lenin won the civil war and took power in Russia. This led Russia to become the first communist country in the world, and it changed its name to the Soviet Union. This brings us to World War II. In 1941, so jumping ahead 21 years, the Soviet Union was still a communist country. By this time, Lenin had died, and he was replaced by a new leader whose name was Joseph Stalin. During World War II, the Soviet Union was invaded by Germany for yet a second time. After many battles, millions of deaths, and a brutal Russian winter, the Soviet army defeated the Germany on the eastern side of Europe, at just as the U.S. and Great Britain were coming in from the west. So if we look at our map here, the Russia and the former Soviet Union was pushing against Germany in World War II from this direction, while the United States and England were invading from this direction. At the end of World War II, the U.S. and the Soviet Union were the two biggest powers still left in the world, and they got into a disagreement about how Europe should be run. The U.S. wanted to create more republics, and the, and the Soviet Union wanted to create more communist governments. They couldn't solve this problem, so they decided to draw a line on the map down the middle of Europe. So they pretty much split Europe in half right down here. Everything to the east of this line would be communist, controlled by the Soviet Union. Everything to the west of this line would be republics, it would be, those countries would be free to run themselves. So basically, the Soviet Union had now grown from being just Russia to including lots of other countries in both Europe and Asia. So you can see that the country of Ukraine in there in yellow is when we talked about this year. Also countries um, like Belarus, Latvia, Estonia, and also countries in Asia like Kazakhstan. The disagreement between the U.S. and the Soviet Union did not end there. And they spent 46 years threatening to go to war against each other and blow, and blow up the world. This disagreement was called the Cold War, and it lasted from 1945 to 1991. It finally ended in 1991 when the Russian people revolted again. The cause of these protests were ironically very similar to the protests of 1917. The people of the Soviet Union wanted good jobs so they could provide food for their families, and they weren't getting that in the Soviet Union. So because of this, the Soviet Union collapsed, and what used to be a union of 15 countries split back up again into 15 different states. And now you can see that the Soviet Union is just simply the country of Russia, which is what we know of today. It is no longer controls all these other countries. So, why does this all matter besides the geography and the politics? Russia had a couple revolutions, a lot of people died, but so what? Why does that matter to us in America? 
Well, even though Russia is no longer a communist country, the Cold War affected the relationship between the U.S. and Russia. That brings us back to this scary guy right here. Uh, Russia and the U.S. still do not trust one another very much. Even though uh, Russia is no longer communist, we still do not have a great relationship with them. Um, Russian hackers interfere with U.S. society and elections, and the U.S. limits its exports uh, to Russia, and we block what we sell to them. Second, communism did not go away with the end of the Soviet Union. Places like China and North Korea still have communist governments, and the people that live there do not have the same freedoms that we do in the United States. Third, people who live in countries like the Ukraine, who were part of the Soviet Union but are no longer a part of them, they are still trying to catch up with the rest of the world. Their countries are not as wealthy and prosperous as their neighbors in Europe like Germany and France. And it explains some differences that you would see if you go there. The standard of living is much lower in Eastern Europe than it is in Western Europe. Countries like France and Germany, people have much better lives than in places like the Ukraine who were stuck under the communist rule for so long. And finally, there's a lesson out there for all you aspiring world conquerors and for the rest of us. What the history of Russia and the Soviet Union shows is that what people really want deep down is not world domination, but peace, land, and bread. In some ways, Lenin wasn't, wasn't wrong. However, it's just sad that he had to kill so many people and fail so epically to try and bring that about. When really giving people a chance to do what they want and some freedom for how they run their lives would probably have been a better option to provide people with the peace, land, and bread that they wanted. So, that's the history of Russia for you, and it will, I'll get more in detail of that in your notes on Thursday with Eastern Europe. Please, for this week, do your current events, make that tasty meal for your family, and look for those notes videos coming up. Have a great week, everybody. Stay safe. Keep on social distancing. Wear your masks when you go out in public. I look forward to seeing all the pictures of the food that you cook. Have a great week, and stay safe.